Please come to order. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Councilor Screen. Here. Joseph Camara. Here. Stephen Camara. Here. Kilby. Here. Long. Here. Pelletier. Here. Maveras. Here. And Vice President Lalabuco. Here. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. A motion to open the hearing? So moved. Second. Motion made by Councilor Kadim, seconded by Councilor Kilby. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Item number one. 170, these are all curb removals. 175 Guild Street, Fall River, Mass. For the removal of curbing as follows. Petitioner has an existing 16-foot driveway and would like to add a separate 21-foot driveway for additional access to a new carport. The proposed work improves access to the property and does not cause a significant adverse effect to on-street parking in the area. Are there any proponents to this proposal? Any proponents? Are there any opponents to this proposal? Any opponents? Seeing none. Item number two, 92 Hanover Street. Fulver Mass for the removal of curbing as follows. The petitioner has an existing 17 foot six inch driveway opening and would like to extend the driveway eight feet on either side for a total driveway width of 33 feet six inches. The proposed work improves access to the property and does not cause a significant adverse effect to on street parking in the area. Are there any proponents? Any proponents wishing to be heard? Any opponents wishing to be heard? Seeing none. Item three, 29 Lucille Lane for the removal of curbing as follows. The petitioner is requesting a 20 foot, 24 foot driveway opening. The proposed work improves access to the property and does not cause a significant adverse effect to on street parking in the area. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Seeing none. Councilor in seat one. Just on uh, Hanover Street, uh, Madam Clerk, through you, when it, when it says there's no adverse uh, impact to street parking, has that been made, has that determination been made by a department head? City engineer. City engineer, so he's, he's gone out. Um, so when the, when the council, if and when the council approves um, the road opening, the curb cut, and you have the language that says eight feet on either side, um, is that a stipulation that they have to have eight feet on on either side and the only reason I bring that up is just when I was going through uh, Google Maps just reviewing this um, 92 Hanover Street does not have or barely has the eight feet on one side of the property so that's the only thing I'm they do have eight feet but but when you open it up it I mean the, the house is so close you'll never be able to fit a car so I, I'm just curious in terms of when we when we say uh -huh. that we're gonna give a 16 foot opening and we have eight on either side is it mandatory to have it that way or can they that is do they have the, the flexibility because they've, they've got more land on the other side so they okay that was the recommendation of the city engineer um, he does state that there's eight feet on either side okay. and to have a, a car fit in the driveway <coughs> that's what they look like or look at or do they just look to see that there's eight feet that can be opened I think <coughs> he, just, he looks at the width of the, I'm assuming he looks at both both Okay. All right, I yield. Madam President. Yes, Councilman seat three. Uh, just for your information, uh, I know we went through proponents and opponents, but after you did that, the uh, proponent came into the ch chamber. So if there are any questions. Uh, Which item, Councilor? So? Which item? Uh, the item that Councilman seat one was just discussing. Uh, Hanover Kitchen. Street. William Kitchen. Mr. Kitchen's in the audience, uh, so if you have any questions from the applicant, uh, he's, he's available to answer questions, I'm sure. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor in seat seven. You know, I, I've seen a lot of curb cuts, but I've never seen so many with a lot of footage. 37, 33, 24. 24 is not bad. 35 and 38. How many people were notified in the neighborhood that this was going to take place? Because I find that the numbers are big. There's, according to the assessor's office, there were in the engineering department there were six abutters. They only notified direct abutters. So it'd be what uh, uh, one across, two, one across on right. each side, right. four people, right? 
All right, there's no, nobody's challenging it, that's okay. With that, I yield. Thank you, Counselor. Before we go to item four, we go back to 92 Hanover Street. Item two, are there any proponents that would like to come down and speak? No. No. No, but the counselor, one qu counselor did have a question if you'd like to come down. You good? Yeah. You good, counselor? I am. I, if the city engineer went out and he's comfortable with it, and as long as they looked at it, I'm okay with it. I just, I just want to make sure if we're, if we're going to approve this, that they're not bound by eight feet and eight feet. Because um, I, just in my opinion, just looking at it, I don't know that it works. But again, I was looking at Google Maps, so. Okay. Thank you, counselor. Any more questions? Item 4, 1440 Slade Street, for the removal of curbing as follows. Petitioner has an existing 19-foot, 4-inch driveway opening on the east side of the property and would like to add a separate 16-foot driveway on the west side of the property for additional access. The proposed work improves access to the property and would eliminate one on-street parking space. Are there any proponents? Any proponents? Are there any opponents? Any opponents? Seeing none. Item 5, 749 Wood Street, Fall River, for the removing of curbing as follows. The petitioner has an existing 19-foot driveway opening on the east side of the property and added an additional 19-foot driveway on the west side of the property for additional access and is seeking council approval after the fact. The proposed work improves access to the property and does not cause a significant adverse effect to on-street parking in the area. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Any opponents? Seeing none. Motion to close the hearings. Motion to close the hearings is made by Councillor Kilby. Second. Seconded by Councillor Long. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Still voting. <coughs> Motion adjourned. Second. Motion adjourned the hearing. Made by Councillor Kadim. Seconded by Councillor Pelletier. All in favor? Aye. Still voting. City Council Committee on Finance will please come to order. Madam Clerk. Councilor Skadim. Here. Joseph Kamara. Here. Stephen Kamara. Here. Kilby. Here. Long. Here. Pelletier. Here. Baveras. Here. Vice President Lalavie Lebeau. Here. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. We have one person that signed up for citizens' input. Jason Hobart, 253 Cross Street, Norwell, Mass. We have a motion to waive the rules. Motion to waive the rules. Motion made by Councilor Stephen Kamara, second by Councilor Pelletier. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Subject matter is the TIF. Who is he? If you come down to the table. The TIF. Okay. Who's this guy? The TIF. Yes. In your name and address, it to the microphone. Jason Hobart, 253 Cross Street, Norwell, Massachusetts. Can you pull that mic a little closer? I sure can. So Nicole here is handing out a, a shortened version of the deck that I believe you guys have already um, have, have seen or have in front of you. So this will just be a little bit quicker to get through some of the points. 
First, I want to thank the members of City Council for the opportunity to address you this evening. My name is Jason Hobart. I'm the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Sexeta. Um, I'd, I'd like to apologize right off the bat. Our CEO, Dave Pignolet, wanted to be here, but uh, he's, uh, I don't know, lucky or not lucky enough to be in Europe right now, kicking off one of our newest uh, and largest customers to date. I'd like to take some time and, and a few moments to describe our company and, and why we believe Fall River could potentially be our new home going forward. We're a cybersecurity company. We help organizations safeguard their data and ultimately protect people like myself and everyone in this, in, in this room um, from data breaches, breaches that I think we've all seen before. We've probably all heard about the target breach that happened a few years ago. We see it a lot in the news, credit card companies, um, consumer-based organizations get breached and it's our consumer information, it's our private data that gets, gets sold and then becomes a problem for all of us. Our software, our applications, everything that we do helps organizations, large, small, private and public, address the challenges associated with data breaches. We help them avoid data breaches and control the information that they're sharing with their non-employees and their contractors. We have customers that include Geisinger Health, Synchrony Bank, Mayo Clinic, BBVA, Blue Cross of Idaho, Eastman Chemical, Harvard Pilgrim, and Tiffany, among many others. And of course, we're in the, in the process of continuing to sell to and, and finalize several more large contracts as we go into the end of this year. If you're looking at slide two, really, if you think about Sexeta, we've been in business since 2006. But most recently, we took a, a Series A fund round of $10 million that's going to really help us fund our growth, expand um, our market share, and one of the big areas is to move our offices so that we can support that growth. The state and local incentives from Fall River and, and the state certainly make the prospect of coming to Massachusetts particularly attractive. We believe that relocating to Fall River is the right move for us, would be the right move for us. We'll be moving 23 jobs to Fall River over the next five years, create 70 new jobs for a total of 93. And a big piece of what we do, and, and based on this, the specialized skills of the people that we hire, you know, we're excited to, to really have an average, an average salary of $60,000 starting salary. And of course, that goes up based on experience and specialized skills. 15 seconds. Um, we talk about positive impact on the community. We're really talking about education and awareness of cybersecurity within um, Fall River. We're excited about that. We've already begun to work with, you know, local uh, communities and schools. BMC Durfee High School, in fact, already reached out to us about their cybersecurity program and helping to drive awareness of cybersecurity in the group. Motion to waive the rules made by Councilor Second. Kilby, seconded by Councilor Long. Great, thank you. Appreciate that. We believe there's a lot of potential. We believe that as we educate, as we make awareness of cybersecurity, as we pull from local talent within Fall River, as we look at the universities and, and schools, and we educate people that will drive up the awareness and, of course, jobs, build jobs, specialized skills in an industry that is lacking right now. The, the average, <coughs> excuse me, the skill gap in cybersecurity right now is, is sitting at a targeted 1.8 million by 2022. So there's a lot, of, a lot of jobs that aren't being filled, and we believe if we start at the ground up and we really focus on education, we really focus on hiring local talent and building that talent ourselves, that we can help address that and make a positive impact on communities like Fall River. With that, I, you know, I, I think that's pretty much it. We're, uh, we're excited about the potential of coming to Fall River, and we believe that we can have a positive impact and be one of the building blocks to really driving towards more of a cybersecurity or a tech hub where you know, we have a, a group of local talent that we're building and that we're uh, pushing towards. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor in seat four. Thank you. Quick question, sir. What, what commitment, um, forgive me if I didn't see it in the, in the agreement, but what yep. commitment have you made to hiring full of residents? Is there anything um, yeah. in writing or? So the commitment is to drive for 70 new jobs. Uh, and I believe that we're bringing 23, we're expecting 23 people to move to Fall River, and then we're expecting to hire a good portion of those new hires from within Fall River. 
the big thing for us as a cybersecurity company is talent, right? And a big piece of that is young talent straight out of school who have the tech skills necessary that we can groom. And that's really why we believe this location is going to be a great location yeah, for us. I'll suggest to you there's, there's an abundance of talent in the city. Yeah. Uh, young people who, uh, who would, uh, would love the opportunity. We, we definitely agree. So, I yield. Thank you. Any further discussion, Councillor C3, Councillor Kamara? How far along are you uh, in terms of uh, locating uh, in Fall River? Do you have prospects of a, a particular location at this point? Yeah, so we've been eyeing uh, 1082 Duval Street. So based on location, amenities, and all of the things that it proposes for us, we believe that's one of the nicest locations. That would be likely a, one of the locations that we'd highly consider in the event that we make the move. No, no tentative leases uh, yet established? None that I'm aware of. And how soon would uh, you like to be open? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> uh, we have already doubled our size in, uh, in Newport in terms of where our space and what we need to do. So I think we're targeting early Q1 at the latest. We'd like to get in, you know, end of March. But that's these are all speculations and estimates at this point. Would you be relocating the action in Newport to Fall River or...? Yep. Would you just be expanding into fall? We're, re we're relocating our entire office. Are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anything further? Councilor C1? Um, so I don't know if really this is, I think it is the question for you, but it may be for the uh, administration as well. Um, so if you can't answer it, we'll, I can wait until we actually get to the agenda item. Uh, but in terms of just the personal property, what are we looking at for personal property? What exactly is it? Computers, servers, is it? That's it. It's computers and servers, <coughs> all the, and there is a document. I, b I believe everyone has, um, but it's all the equipment that our developers and our people need to maintain, produce, and enhance our products going forward. Did you say that there was a document? I believe so. Yeah. To asset schedule. Did I miss that? Most of it is laptops and servers required to build and maintain our products. I have a copy if you want to see it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I didn't see that. Okay, thank you. I yield for now. Just, yeah. Anything further? Thank you, Mr. Hobart. Thank you, everyone. Item one is the acting mayor and resolution regarding the TIF agreement for Sexeta Inc. at 1082 Duval Street. If the city administrator and Mrs. Marasco would join us at the table, please. Council President and Councilors. Um, so ha as you know, you have in front of you the um, TIF agreement that was voted by the TIF Board on November 19th. Um, this is a TIF for personal property. Um, Councilor in seat one just asked for a list of the property. Um, this property will be looked at on an annual basis and assessed on the annual basis based on um, a vendor that we currently um, use RRC for the actual assessment and the value. So what you're seeing in this packet is um, just estimates. As you know, personal property depreciates, so um, the company is well aware of it. Um, <clears throat> But this is a project that is going to be um, looked at in conjunction with some state credits as well, um, with a relocation and some potential um, total new jobs of 70 jobs on top of the 23 that the gentleman um, from Sesseter indicated would be coming from the Newport um, location. Thank you. Councilor C4? Yep. I would just quickly ask. Um, I understand the nature of this equipment, the high-tech equipment, some, somewhat to very, very special. But do we have any other personal property tips in uh, Fall River? Not uh, that I'm aware of. 
Uh, most of the tips that are, are provided within the city are, are real estate tips. Well, actually, you have both TIF and personal property tax tips. Mixed. Most of the previous ones are a combination of the two. How about the solar farms? That's per, that, that's taxed on a personal property basis, I believe. Pilot. Yeah, I would have to. I would have to. You know, it's okay. Double check that, but uh, typically, um, you know, where there's an investment in real estate that increases the value of real estate, you give it on real estate, and the, the statute allows you to also include personal property if you want. In this particular instance, while there is no significant investment in real estate, it is appropriate for you to consider a per personal property tax only. Uh, the allowance of a personal property tax here, which is a significant investment as we move towards cybersecurity and technology, um, will allow the company to be eligible for state tax credits. In the absence of an incentive from the local, uh, from the municipality, um, the new there are new rules with the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council. So this is a recommendation which is a nominal uh, support of this project, which again will allow the company to proceed for um, economic development incentive program credits. Yeah, yeah my memory was just uh, refreshed, I believe, on the, ass the assessment for the solar farms is just on the land. The pilot is on the actual pieces. Um, and I know we do have a letter here from Senator Mike Rogers, who's right. supporting this. And um, so. There are other examples in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I personally um, oversaw uh, one in Mansfield uh, before coming here. As you know, I was the Southeast Regional Director for the Mass Office of Business Development. I oversaw and reviewed and referred all of your TIF agreements for the past five years to the state. Uh, there are also uh, one in Stoughton, an Amazon, again, only equipment, and Candela in Marlboro, and Clear Motion in Billerica, where that those municipalities have also granted just personal property tax TIFs as a well for Amazon, the promise of jobs. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Amazon and Fall River, we... Um, you gave it on both, as, personal I, as property? I believe. We did. Okay, yes. so the answer is that we did. We, for there is years. precedent for it. Okay, I yield. Thank you. you. Councilor in seat six. Council Long. They're going to be, of, they're of, going to register as a foreign corporation at the present time. Yes, taxable. Is your council, is your microphone on, Councilor? Yeah, I'm probably not close enough. I have, a, I have a little bit of a cold, so excuse me. Um, <coughs> And looking at this, because it's personal property, I just want people to understand that uh, over the course of the five years, um, we're talking about $195,000 in the first year, three hundred ten in the second, three thirty dollars in the third, three thirty five dollars in the fourth, and three thirty five dollars in the fifth. So it's a five-year TIF. The uh, percentages go 100%, 90%, 80%, 70%, 60%. This being personal property and it being mostly high-tech electronics, um, the value on the personal property would come in in the first year as you bring it in, but that would depreciate significantly in successive years. I think you're going to have a difficult time reaching the $1.5 million in incremental value, but that's neither here nor there because whatever the value is, the tax will be reflected. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I think it's, while I voted in favor of this to come down to the council because I think it's kind of different and uh, something that we should all consider, um, it's kind of interesting to when we start doing TIFs on a personal property. Um, for that reason, it's very, very difficult to keep track of uh, the inventory to make sure that they're reaching wherever they're reaching. So. So it doesn't it doesn't matter to me if they if they don't do a million five and they only do seven hundred thousand. That's know? that's correct, Councillor. So we will look at the value mean. each year um, by RRC, and that's that's exactly what the TIF will be get granted on. And by them being a foreign corp, they will be taxed on the uh, personal is, property. That's also correct. And won't get the excise tax, so that's how that works. That's also correct. And because I did inquire of RRC, and I they found out they do require the companies to provide the ST form um, 
ST2 form yep. uh, uh, when reported. And then in addition, the company that you have doing your assessments do ask for supplemental information, will, which will be a comprehensive schedule. So that will be on file with the city on a regular basis. And then the office, which will be <coughs> monitoring the, the TIFs going forward, um, will uh, will uh, review those. I, I'm, I, I'm going to support this, um, but I, I'm a little bit leery about it. Uh, but I will support it because I think it's it's uh, different, um, and I and I want these type of companies to come to Fall River. But I would caution that uh, at some point we got to be very careful as um, when we get these new buildings where we're giving a tiff on the building, then we're giving tiffs on the on the tenants. We got a building that we're really not getting any taxes on, so we got to be a little bit concerned about that. But I will be supporting this, and uh, I want to wish this company the uh, best. Welcome to Fall River. I hope this goes through, um, and I hope you're very successful and uh, these jobs come to fruition. I yield. Anything further from the council? Councilor in seat two? Yeah, I'm also on the TIF board, and I approve that on the TIF board. And I think the key to this is 90 new jobs for the city of Fall River, good paying jobs, um, and that's something that we've been looking for. So, mm -hmm. whether it's personal property or tax property, it's a five year TIF. You're going to pay the percentage of as he said, it increments 100% the first year, then it trickles down to five-year tips. You're going to get 90 new jobs, good paying jobs, and then there's, they're going to be spending money locally as well because they're going to be in the city, so that's going to be a spin off of that. So I'm on full support of it. I hope my colleagues support it as well. Thank you. With that, I yield. Thank you. Anything further from the council? Council on seat one? Um, just in terms of the agreement that was signed, and uh, my colleague in seat four, I think he kind of alluded to the uh, local preference. Uh, so. Prior agreements, I, I believe, actually spelled out local preference, and I know this can't mandate that it's for um, residents who get the jobs, but I see that this, at least I missed it. Um, I was trying to see if there was any language that actually listed the local preference. <coughs> is it in the agreement, or is it just silent in terms of local preference, and we just got a... Mm, I can find it for you, Councillor, but I'm pretty sure on, um, and I apologize, I probably should have read it. Uh, they shall... Um, Best effort. Work, yeah, work with the uh, Bristol Wib, and what, what page? I'm sorry. I, what page are you on? I'm gonna. I, I will find it for you. Because I was looking on page three, the company's obligation. I thought. Right. I thought I would have. I would have seen it under number one. Excellent. The only referral that, and you're absolutely right, that I'm that I'm seeing here is in paragraph five, where we do require the company to report the number of jobs created for Fall River residents, number of Fall River residents employed. This might be a scrivener. Thank you very much. It might just be a scrivener's. Um, so I guess would it be too, too much to ask if we can update the agreement to include just a, a local preference again? You know, good faith effort to attract or try to attract local residents for these jobs if qualified. Okay, so we just have to work this out practically. The EACC is expecting a, a, an agreement. Um, no, I, I mean the council. So, yeah. so the council, the, so the council could vote on it. Just mm -hmm. if you're in agreement with it, I, I guess oh, I would absolutely. just make an amendment. And, and you're right. The language mm -hmm. is generally that they uh, will utilize the Bristol County Workforce Investment Board, um, the, the Fall River Career Center, and use best efforts to um, recruit and hire from Fall River re residents. And then typically, because you're in the Greater Fall River uh, ETA, yep. and then we say, and then also you can reach the Greater Fall River mm -hmm. ETA. And then I, I also noticed it was kind of silent with the uh, number of jobs and the years that they were gonna be created. Uh, and just in the PowerPoint presentation, of, uh, the company had presented to us, they actually outline. Um, can, could we put that in, include yeah, that? Yeah, it's in the, the preliminary application, which is will be incorporated by reference. Oh, okay. So All if right. you look on page four, page four, four. thank you, Mary. That's okay, page four of the <laughs> Teamwork. application. Teamwork, four, yeah, page four of the, uh, of the uh, application. application, right. Mm -hmm. And okay. as you know, that they will be reported, uh, required to report quarterly. They are also required to report to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts these job numbers. And then in turn, the city has access to these numbers to know about the monitoring thereof. Okay. I yield. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Saying nothing? 
Mr. Hardy, I just had a question. I know the letter from the acting mayor came down that he is opposed to this, or he's not supporting this TIF. Do you know what the vote of the TIF board was? Um, it was three, three, to one. three to one, right? There were four of you that evening. Yes, because there was one absent. Three to one? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. Councilor C1. Thank you. I, I did mean to ask that question. So I, I did see the so, memo that came down from the administration saying that he was not in favor of it. Just curious as to the reason. Uh, personal property. He's not in favor of per personal property TIFs mm -hmm. um, and would prefer them to be yeah. real estate TIFs. Okay. Uh, just in terms of, and, and again, I guess I, I'm in agreement with him in terms of personal property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, I think the, and, and some of my colleagues and I were talking about this, I just think it's, you know, the state just puts us in a bad situation where we have to support locally in order for them to kind of incentivize um, at the state exactly. level. So uh, what are they eligible for in terms of dollar amounts? Do we know? Um, in a gateway city, it could be up towards $7,500 per job. Okay. So, it's so it, is, it is significant. Significant, and, right. And just be mindful. And I would love to have this conversation with you. Uh, we are in competition mm -hmm. with for Rhode Island, for example which gives um, basically all of a, a, an employer's contributions to unemployment as, uh, insurance as, as a tax credit. So um, I, I will defer to the company in terms of the competitive nature about where they decided to locate. Uh, but that is, I think it's a, valid, it's a valid question that you raise. And in this particular instance, uh, the schedule that we put forward we thought would be, is actually satisfactory enough for the state to accept this application to move forward for state and hopefully not so burdensome on the city as to to um, if they don't accept concerns. it right. yeah. yeah all right with that i yield you yield anything further thank you i'll make a motion to oh is this it's already in it's in full council yes do you have a motion to adjourn thank you ladies so moved. thank you thank you motion to adjourn Finance made by Councilor Kadeem, seconded by Councilor Kilby. All in favor? Aye. Still voting. <laughs> finance is adjourned. City Council will now come into order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Skadeen? Here. Joseph Kamara? Here. Stephen Kamara? Here. Kilby? Here. Long? Here. Volunteer? Here. Favaris? Here. Vice President Lullaby Here. Will everyone in the Council Chamber please rise for a moment of silent prayer? Please remain standing for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Madam Clerk. The first item before you is the request for the TIF agreement for Sexeta Incorporated at 1082 Duval Street. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt, made by Councillor Joseph Camara, seconded by Councillor Stephen Camara. Any discussion? Can I just add the amendment that the uh, local hiring preference be added as discussed uh, during the Finance Committee. Could you repeat that amendment again, Councillor Kadim? That the local hiring preference be added into the agreement. Motion made to amend by Councillor Kadim, seconded Second. by Councillor Joseph Camara. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adopt as amended. Motion to adopt as amendment made by Councilor Second. Joseph Camara, seconded by Councilor Long. Any discussion? Does that need to be a roll call, Madam Clerk? Oh, no, it's not necessary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Item number two is a communication from the Board of Election Commissioners and the results of the recent city election. Move to accept the communication, placed on file. Second. Move to accept and place on file, made by Councilor Stephen Camara, seconded by Councillor Kilby, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So voted. The Traffic Commission requesting amendments to the ordinances. Second. Motion referred to the Ordinance Committee, made by Councillor Stephen Camara, seconded by Councillor Pelletier. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 So voted. Item number four first, we have the miscellaneous traffic amendment for passage, um, excuse me, miscellaneous traffic ordinance for passage through second reading and enrollment. Move to pass through second reading and enrollment. Second. Move to pass through second reading and enrollment, been by Councillor Stephen Camara, seconded by Councillor Kilby. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. So voted. Motion to take items five through nine together, made by Councillor Kilby. Seconded by Councillor Stephen Camara. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Madam Clerk. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt Second. items five through nine. Made Second. by Councillor Joseph Camara. Seconded by Councillor Long. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So voted. Item number 10 is the police chief's report. Motion to accept the place on file. It would be a motion to adopt, Councillor. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt, made by Councillor Long. Second. Seconded by Councillor Pelletier. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. So voted. We have um, applications for auto repair shop licenses. Any objections from the police No, Councillor. <coughs> motion to adopt, made by Councillor Stephen Camara. Second. Second by Councillor Long. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So voted. Number of claims. Move claims to Corporation Council. Second. Motion referred to Corporation Council made by Councillor Stephen Kamara, seconded by Councillor Kadim. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So voted. Move we'll to take the planning board. Together. I'm sorry, say that again, Councillor? Uh, if the clerk wants to read it for us, to, we'll just take 13 and 14 together. Item 13 are minutes of the planning board, and item 14 are minutes of the city council public hearings held on November 12th. Adopt, motion to take items 13 and 14 together, made by Councilor Stephen Camara. Second. Second by Councilor Long. Motion to adopt, made by Councilor Kilby. On the uh, motion to take them together, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. So voted. Motion to adopt, made by Councilor Kilby. Second. Second by Councilor Long. All in favor? Aye. So voted. And item 15 is a communication from a city resident regarding an issue with stray cats. Move to refer to Ordinance Committee. Motion to refer to Committee on Ordinance made by Councilor Stephen Camara. <laughs> Second. Second by Councilor Kadim. Any discussion? Just, Councilor in seat three. Just briefly, uh, I noticed that the letter was not signed. Um, I did speak to someone who said they were going to send the letter, so I think I know from where, from whom the letter comes. Um, she is asking for a ordinance on uh, feeding of cats, and uh, it seems as if it is a health problem, at least 
a health problem in her particular situation. Um, so I think in out of respect for the request that we take a look at it and see if there's any way it could be uh, addressed through what it is. Thank you, Councilor. You yield? Yes, I yield. Anything further? Councilor at seat six. You know, I understand it's a problem, but you know, you put these things through ordinance. Okay, we passed an ordinance saying you can't feed a cat. Who's gonna who's gonna enforce that? We're gonna have a cat feeding officer? I mean, where's that gonna go? Animal it's, control. I just wanna know where that goes. Animal control. Animal control. There we go. Do you yield, Councilor? I yield. Anything further? A motion to refer to the committee on ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Councilor seat six is opposed. Ridiculous. Sure. Haven't noticed a Just open up hunting season lost. for straight cats. Motion to accept and place on file. Second. Motion to accept made by Councilor Kadim, seconded by Councilor Stephen Kamara. Any discussion? All Aye. in favor? Aye. So voted. Committee on Ordinances and Legislation at a meeting held on December 3rd. Motion to adopt the first reading. <laughs> Madam Clerk, could you finish reading? Um, voted unanimously to recommend that the accompanying proposed ordinance be passed through first reading. These are personnel ordinances relating to the Water Department. Motion to pass through first reading made by Councilor Kadim. Second. Seconded by Councilor Long. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. We need a brief recess, Madam Clerk. Madam President, yes. uh, just while we're doing the brief recess, is it any possibility that we can uh, switch the next meeting, which is I think is the 17th, either to the 16th or the 8th? No, I mean to the 16th. Is that? <laughs> Madam Clerk, what's the date of the next meeting? 17th. Tuesday, December 17th. What would you suggest, Councilor? The 16th, if possible. Monday the 16th. Does anyone have an objection to changing the date of the next meeting to Monday the 16th? I'd just like to be at the next meeting. Unfortunately, if it's on the 17th, I just got a family commitment that I've got to be at, and I know there's some counselors that's the last meeting, so I'd like to be here for that. I have no problem. Is that fine with the room? Yes? Sure. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. What are we doing? Do we need for a vote? So Yeah, she's just trying to figure out if we need to make a motion now. Or, yeah. Sign, do not feed the pigeons, come out of the clipper. Whoever enforces don't feed the pigeons, have no force, don't feed the cats too. It was not feed the pigeons. It's an audience. That was you, you submitted that. Yeah. I think it was done. I, I think I know what it was. City Council is now back in session, Madam Clerk. We have the miscellaneous traffic ordinance for passage through final ordination. Move to pass through final ordination. Councillor, uh, motion to move through, pass through final ordination made by Councillor Kilby, seconded by Councillor Long. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. And we have the City Council order rescheduling the City 
Council Committee on Finance in regular meeting from Tuesday, December 17th to Monday, December 16th. So, Motion second. made by second. Councilor Kadeem, seconded by Councilor Long. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. That's all we have. Adjourned. Motion Aye. adjourned, made by Councilor Kilby. Second. Seconded by Councilor Long. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.